Jesus, we thank you this morning for your body broken for us. How wonderful that is. So we break this bread this morning, remembering what you did for us. And you said, this is my body broken for you. Take, eat. Take, eat. So that's what we want to do this morning. We want to remember. So we exercise our imagination, Lord, and we picture you're taking a terrible beating for us. The Word says, by your stripes we were healed. So we imagine those stripes purchasing for us healing. we know that you did it. So we know without a shadow of a doubt that we are healed. We have been healed by your stripes. So Father, we ask you to help us activate that this morning as we eat this bread. We believe we receive healing. Thank you for our new teeth. Thank you for our new bodies, new body parts. Thank you for restoring our flesh so that we can function and accomplish the will of the Father. That is our desire. In Jesus' name. Jesus, for your blood poured out for us. We drink this cup this morning, rejoicing in your sacrifice, coming into agreement with the Word of God and with the Father, that you entered in once into the holy place and obtained eternal redemption. Not like the blood of bulls and goats, but you have the power of an everlasting life. So you are a priest after the order of Melchizedek. So we thank you, and we praise you, and we worship you this morning, Father. And we thank you for the blood poured on the mercy seat. And we say, our faith is in the blood of Jesus, not in works not in our righteousness, but in yours, in your offer of salvation to the whole human race. So we declare that we agree with the word of God, that we have been made innocent. You have removed our sin as far as the east is from the west. So far, you have removed our transgressions from us. So we thank you and praise you and worship you this morning. Jesus, now we're down to one third in flashing in the power of the camera. So we might use lose you guys, YouTubers. <laughs> Sorry. Romans chapter 15. Uh, it's been a while since we've been recorded, so uh, I almost forget where we are. Let's just start in 15, verse 4. For whatever things were written in earlier times were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant 
you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, For this cause I will confess to thee among the nations, and sing unto thy name. Oh yeah, we read, we read all this, haven't we? And again he saith, Rejoice, ye nations, with his people. And again praise the Lord, all ye nations, and laud him, all ye peoples. And again Isaiah saith, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he shall rise to reign over the nations. In him shall the nations trust. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Awesome. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort, as putting you in mind, because of the grace that is given to me of God, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. I have therefore that of which I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me, to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed, through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Holy but by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. But as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they that have not heard shall understand. For which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you, but now, having no more place in these parts, and having a great desire these many years to come unto you, when, whenever I take my journey into Spain, I will come to you, for I trust to see you in my journey, and to be brought on my way there by you, if first I be somewhat filled with your company. But now I go into Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. <laughs> And I think this, what he's referring to there is when the prophets warned him not to go to Jerusalem. But uh, anyway, he, he, Paul is taking this section and he's, he's spent 9, 10, 11 talking about the Jews, wanting them to be saved. So now he's spent um, chapter 15 talking about how that the God said the Gentiles were going to be included in this party. Mm -hmm. And so he quotes all these Old Testament verses. The place is called Illyricum. Illyricum? Yes. Illyria. Illyricum. Northwestern Illyricum. Greece, where northern Italy and Greece meet. Oh, okay. Illyricum. So Paul went all over the place, and he's saying, since I've preached everywhere else, I'm coming to you. So maybe, maybe he had a plan here. Maybe he was, maybe he was going to go to Jerusalem, get arrested, appeal to Caesar, and have a free trip to Rome. <laughs> but he didn't have to pay for it. Never thought about that before. Maybe that's what happened. I don't know. But um, he makes a, a great presentation that the Gentiles are going to be included. And then he says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. That's, that's how you have joy and peace. In believing. 
If you don't believe, you don't have joy and you don't have peace. You're in your brain. Instead of believing what God said about you, that, that you are His Son, that you are perfect, and that He loves you, and that you have a place, and that He's going to accomplish His... If you don't believe all that, then you're going to be left with your flesh to, to get along the best you can. Yeah. And that ain't joy, and that ain't peace. That you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I myself am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness. How about that? Filled with all knowledge. Able also to admonish one another. So he's saying because you have the Holy Spirit, Romans, church at Rome, even though you're Gentiles and even though you have been raised in the scripture and whatever, you are full of goodness and you are filled with knowledge. So, uh, nevertheless, brothers, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God that I should be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. The Jews said the Gentiles were dirty dogs, unclean, not worthy of time, attention, or mentioning. And people wonder why nobody likes the Jews. They got the wrong message. So Paul is saying, no, the Gentiles have been included since the very beginning in this plan of God. And that the, the, the Gentiles are acceptable and sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And if you think back to the book of Acts, where Peter is up on the rooftop, and he falls into a trance. And God gives him a vision of all these unclean animals being let down in a sheet, which I think is... Just a big white sack. That's amazing. It's, and unfold. And he would let them down in a sheet and say, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. It was like a giant picnic blanket. And he's like, No, no. Giant picnic Never, Lord, not I. He's like, Peter, arise, Peter, kill and eat. <laughs> but even even still, later, and, and, and you know, who am I to say this? Ah, oh, shellfish. But but Paul has to come back to Jerusalem, and he rebukes the whole bunch because they still didn't believe God. They didn't believe Peter. They Peter didn't believe Peter, and they still would not fellowship and treat the Gentiles as equals. So Paul is telling them here, um, through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. And I strive to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. But it, but as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they that have not heard shall understand. So Paul was the, the, the apostle to the Gentiles. The Jew of Jews, the Pharisee of the Pharisees, the smartest man in the whole nation, the most religious, most devout, most unbelievably Jewish person was not allowed to talk to the Jews about this. <laughs> the last time he was in Jerusalem, did he kill Stephen? I don't know. He was in Jerusalem, but I don't know if that was the last time. So anyway, that's just how God does things. The, the, the people that we think should be the most 
worthy. But that's not who God uses. That's, he doesn't tell them. <laughs> so, so there's hope for all of us regular ignorant. There always is. What else does he have? Well, some people are pretty famous and pretty fancy and pretty rich and pretty powerful and have... They're still just people. Oh, but they make their mistakes and they're, and they're fallible. That's true. But the ones who are qualified in the world's eyes are disqualified in God's eyes. So here, here he takes... The Jew of Jews that knew all the law and could explain it better than anybody. And he sends them to the Gentiles who don't care about the law. <laughs> and then he sends Peter, the fisherman, who probably never went to school even, to display the power of God to the Jewish nation, to preach the gospel to them. Well, grace is a contrast to law. That's right. So when God, when everybody knows you didn't come up with this yourself, then God gets the glory. So, so Father, I wasn't there, obviously, and we didn't. Know, we don't know how Paul really thought about all these things as far as all we know is what he's wrote in the book. But uh, he, apparently he was quite a fellow. Yeah. So we appreciate him.